Hey guys, welcome to the New Life Vision series. Uh, we are going to talk about all the topics around New Life, where it comes from, why, what's the vision behind. There will be eight episodes and the first episode will be about the genesis and what we mean by the new life and the creative life. Uh, the second episode will be about uh, the concept of ecosystem and decentralized communities. Uh, which is uh, very important to understand where we are going with the technology. Uh, the third episode will be about the current creative industries and how they are lagging compared to the way technologies and economics have evolved recently and how you can um, take advantage of those changes. Then we'll talk about uh, collective curated creativity, which is this idea that when you create, you are not just on your own creating, but there is an actual trade of ideas and uh, a lot of information is flowing around and everyone is kind of like co-creating, which is even more true in contemporary hyper-connected world. Then we talk about the ecosystem, new life, and go deeper into how this ecosystem works and how the different uh, participants will operate um, then the episode uh, number seven will be about creative coordination, which is this idea that uh, we can uh, communicate in efficient ways in order to produce innovation. Uh, when when you, you want to coordinate with other people about something that is known, that is reproducible or that is predictable, uh, it's pretty easy because everyone follows some kind of role that is pretty fine. But when it's about creating and innovating, you have to build some tools and some knowledge on how to do that. And this is an amazing topic that we will address there. And then eventually we will talk about the roadmap, the next steps, where is new life going and what we are uh, intending to achieve with this whole movement. So let's start with the first episode. Um, Let's start right away. And so, as I said earlier, we will talk about the origins of new life, the genesis, the, uh, the intent behind and the context where this is happening. And so I would argue that we are entering in a, in a phase of uh, the human uh, journey where things are about to shift in ways that never happened before. And of course, everyone loves to say, you know, it's like the end of the world and something. Uh, we are the last generation and there is this, this uh, temptation to, to claim that we are the, the most important generation or the last. And there is obviously a bias around it. But uh, I will uh, um, uh, present you some historical evidence or some, let's say, analysis of how history and patterns reproduce to lead us to where we are today. So if we look at uh, the, the, the human history and this like collective brain that we have, you know, we are like this giant being that's somehow living according to a journey and according to cycles. Uh, if you look at the last 300 years, let's say, uh, you will see three very uh, distinct, di di distinct uh, phases uh, or cycles and it kind of works like a pendulum it's like we go to one extreme and we go to the other extreme and then we kind of regret or we kind of push it too hard and then we want to go back to the other extreme and then we uh, and we go back and forth so uh, the last big cycle let's say was around the 18th century um, and what happened is that we were coming from the Middle Ages and a lot of people were very frustrated and wanted to change the world and there was a massive revolution which led to the Enlightenment. And to the second phase is which we called modernity. So modernity is this idea that first we need to separate uh, spirituality from the state, so the separation of the, of the, of the church and the state, uh, universal human rights, 
and all those concepts, ethics, philosophy, reason, so we can call it the age of reason, the age of industrialism, the industrial revolution, And this, uh, this phase is really about rejecting completely spirituality from the Middle Ages, like the church and everyone living according to the fear of God or the fear of the devil and all those like emotional approaches to life, moving to the age of reason, to the age of being uh, responsible adults, individuals that will try to understand the world, try to theorize around the world. So obviously it's a lot of economic theory, a lot of psychology, so Freud, Karl Marx, for example, are a very great example of modernity. Um, modernity is about industrialism, um, it's about uh, optimization of supply chains and making sure that we are as smart as possible in order to achieve the maximum impact in terms of uh, survival, in terms of uh, production of goods, and we kind of forgot or we kind of rejected this concept of spirituality, this concept of intuition, this concept of magic. Uh, it's the age of disenchantment. We lost this kind of um, uh, substance, let's say, in our life, which led to the horrors of the 20th century. Uh, the, the Second World War and all, all ideologies and authoritarian regimes that emerged from this uh, lack of, uh, of, of love, of emotions. People were repressing their um, aggressivity or their uh, human traits and ended up in this giant onslaught, giant um, uh, explosion of anger and explosion of, of uh, brutality and so at that point we decided that that was enough uh, that it was time to rethink and that it was time to maybe look back at what we are, were missing from the pre-modern uh, era and how we can incorporate them into our new life so let's call this post-modernity because we still don't know it still, it still has to be defined. But we are clearly entering this new, uh, this new phase. Now, another pattern that we can uh, definitely uh, agree on is that something has happened here that has also happened here, which is the democratization of information technology. So in the uh, pre, in the Renaissance era, we have the rise of the book, uh, the printing press to be uh, more accurate and when you are suddenly able to give access to um, to literacy to everyone which is what the the industrial production of books has produced you shift the world from uh, a very elitist world where very very few people are literate very few people have access to knowledge have access to uh, all those um, uh, secrets, let's say, that they can share and that they can use to dominate the world. Uh, suddenly, when everyone has access to it, boom, it's an equalizer. Everyone starts to uh, have access to the same information and you end up with a lot of people emerging from all over the place and coming and claiming some of the power that was missing when they were completely in the dark. You can take the smartest person in the world if they are isolated and they don't have access to literacy, they don't have access to transport, they don't have access to communication, their life will just go on in this little cave somewhere in the world and nothing is going to happen. If you can bring all those people together and if you can connect them and if you can make them cooperate, then you have the revolution, you have the enlightenment, you have modernity, you have the explosion of uh, demography, of survival, uh, inventions, uh, the beauty of all those uh, innovations that happened during modernity. And so the question today is, uh, obviously the new information technology is the personal computer. So you have a phase where the elites have uh, started to play with, uh, with computers and 
they uh, kind of use it to dominate through technocracy, bureaucracy, and all that. And you end up with the personal computer that does the exact same thing as here. So here you have the book, the Renaissance. And here you have the personal computer and then smartphone. The derivation, but it actually, uh, it actually also uh, matters a lot because the smartphone gives access to computers to even more people because it's more accessible. And you have this revolution here that produces an explosion of let's call it the new life, an explosion of knowledge of light. You know, we call it the enlightenment because suddenly you turn on the light and everyone has access to information. Uh, the, 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 the internet and the light brought by the internet could be described as 1,000 or 1 million times bigger, faster than what the book did to us. So if you look at the, at the human journey as a, some kind of curve towards abundance, uh, because obviously we might have lost a lot in the process from the past, we might have lost a lot of knowledge, but we can see clearly by all indicators that life expectancy and, uh, and access to comfort, the amount of people that are lifted out of poverty every day, uh, this number is exponential. Now we are like, the, the world population is growing very fast, a lot of people are lifted out of poverty, and so the question and the challenge that are the challenges that are coming now are very different. The configuration is very different compared to what we had uh, during modernity. So not only our values are going to change, the economics are going to change. We are going to be disrupted by technology and by the creativity of people who are using technology to be more creative. Uh, this is going to accelerate at a pace that that will. <laughs> that will be um, uh, unbelievable and cannot be even described or predicted at this point. So um, now let's look at what are the, the different components uh, that are getting us into this new life and that are accelerating our path towards this new life. And let's take, uh, let's do a Venn diagram. So we have postmodernity, as we described, and so postmodernity is characterized by creativity. So uh, labor was the modernity, uh, let's say, value, labor value, as de described by Karl Marx. Uh, it, it's this concept that only labor produces value. This is not going to be true, and I will explain why. Uh, creativity, community. So we are shifting away from individualism to back to communities and we care, we will care more for each other. Um, and the third main component is um, emotions, spirituality and uh, mindfulness that will become, and we can see it already every day, uh, uh, dominant in our life. And finally, uh, horizontality, which is Modernity is characterized by or, uh, verticality, which is uh, authority figure tells you what to think, what to learn, uh, lifts you out of uh, savagery to civilization. Um, and we are moving from this like vertical, I'm going to tell you how to live your life, to horizontal, let's co-create, let's be all at the same level, let's be all equal, because yes, now we have access to the same knowledge. Now everyone has access to the same knowledge. So this whole concept of uh, dominant hierarchies and, and stuff like that are going to be less obvious. They are not going to disappear, but they are going to be less obvious. So postmodernity, that's massive transformation. Second one, internet. So internet, information technology that is happening at the same time as postmodernity, which is accelerating the transformation. And then third one, robotics and AI. So imagine living in a world where labor is being produced by machines, meaning all the things that can be learned at school, 
all the things that can be reproduced, that can be predictable, that are repetitive, can be done already by machines. It's just uh, a matter of time that all companies start to ad adopt them. And the intelligence of those machines is increasing faster every year. And we are working hands-on with AI. And I can tell you, uh, it's far from being as intelligent as humans, but it will be soon ready to replace us for all those dumb things that we have had to do for uh, hundreds of years and that we eventually will be freed from. So, um, Internet revolution of information, robotics and AI revolution of uh, work and value, and postmodernity revolution in values and lifestyle, and this is basically our new life. And so, when we wake up to this new life, what we realize, the first thing we realize, is that all the infrastructures that we have around us, I'm talking about education, I'm talking about uh, work, companies, uh, countries, all those infrastructures that we have created, they are obsolete. Because they have been built based on the uh, background, based on a background that was very different than the one where we are going to be. So it means everything needs to be rebuilt, hence the name New Life. So it's time to look at the infrastructures, it's time to examine the mood we have, uh, that's maybe the, the number one uh, aspect of this new life. Uh, with what mood are we entering this new life? Is it through fear, hate, division, or love, care? And this is uh, one of the main aspects of the, the new life movement. Uh, before everything else, before the technology, before even the ideas, before uh, conversation, what mood do you have when you enter this new life? And then we look at uh, a concept called the creative life, which is what happens the day, the only thing that has value and the only thing that makes us different from machine is our ability to create. And what is creativity? What is the creative life? What kind of infrastructures will be necessary to produce in order to facilitate this creative life? And this is uh, the topic of the next videos. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon.